All right, so let's do this again. <laughs> so I don't know if you got rid of my email, but basically um, it's taking excessively long to process today's lecture recording. As you can see, I started, I finished like five hours ago, but then <clears throat> I didn't get the recording yet, so uh, I don't really know what's happening, but basically I would have to redo the lecture just in case it's going to take a few days. I check out the Twitter and then I found some comments that says um, it's taking excessively long, excessively long. So let's do it again. Okay, so today I'm going to um, make sure that I'm recording. Okay. So I'm going to revisit some of the stuff that we talked about in React uh, last, last lecture. And then we're going to look at some new um, features of React um, for making, a uh, making website more dynamically. Um, so basically React, just to recap, React is an uh, advanced front-end framework and it is useful because um, it's much faster than using JavaScript or jQuery uh, slash HTML. Um, the reason why it is faster, it is because um, the React is, as a, platform, as a framework, it takes care of all the rendering and then it doesn't render the whole thing all the time. Like, um, but it only render the elements that are needed to be updated. So it has like a links between data and um, data and the rendering function, so that it will render only the parts that are necessary. So um, then the other benefit of React was. Uh, the modular modularity so like um the react frame uh, react framework is kind of forcing programmers to create components so they they could um actually reuse some of the components so so um let's say in one project if you create um some certain part in a website that can be reused what you have to do is copy and paste the HTML and copy and paste the JavaScript, which is gonna be, you know, time consuming, but React is everything is is, is a component. So um, if you, you know, like grab the components and put it somewhere else in the other project, and you can re <coughs> actually reuse it. So um, again, I'm just going to repeat what we did last time and then like review some of the stuff because this is completely new. So it could be, I thought it would be nice to review it. Um, we do the um, thing again. So here I'm gonna create a hello world program. So let's, <clears throat> uh, hopefully everyone has uh, Node.js, um, installed in their computer already because of the Simon 4. And then I'm going to follow this tutorial to create a boilerplate project for create uh, for React app. So basically this is a Node, um, Node.js package that creates like a hello world project for React. So I'm going to grab this thing uh, and then Folder document. So here I'm going to create a. Oh, I'm going to create a project called um, April twenty first class demo, and then. Actually, it's going to take a few minutes. Um, so 
while we're waiting, let's go back to the slides. And basically there are two, if, um, two files that you, um, that like, you know, the React starts with. Index.html is basically the uh, HTML file that has the whole like header and body and, you know, um, HTML root element. Um, and then um, basically it's empty, but like it only has one div element, which is going to be filled by React framework, a React project. And the other important starting point is um, index.js under source folder, which is going to uh, basically render HTML and then um, insert that HTML um, in the root element. So let me see if I can explain that. Maybe I'll be able to open it. So this is the one that I'm creating. Um, okay, so now it's created. So I'm gonna move in, um, go into the folder and then run the project. And then this, um, basically this node package is going to create like a Node.js server automatically. Um, and then we can access the website that they're building using localhost. So this is the hello world example that is given by the, by the package. So it says edit source slash app JS and save to reload. So let's actually check that out. So public, if you go to public index.html, um, so it's going to have, um, you know, plain HTML file, like it's, it's like something that you are familiar with. So here's the title, let's change it to April 21st class, take two. And if I save it, before I save it, um, see that this is, um, the title of it was React App. If I save it, it's going to update this um, title of this web page. I don't even have to refresh it because create a React app is going to take care of refreshing. It's going to check whether if there's any update in the files and it's going to re-launch um, the, the web page. Okay, so basically it has body tag, but it has nothing in it. It only has div element with, um, whose ID is root, and then source index.js is going to be the entry point. So basically it is saying is that, hey, uh, don't worry about the strict mode, it's basically um, kind of a React option that's going to check the syntax, React syntax uh, more rigorously. But basically what it is saying is that, hey, I'm going to add Com components called app in this particular element, which is so document got dot get element by ID and root, which is um, this element, and then it is going to add app component in that particular under that div element. So what is app component? App component is something that uh, is available from this guy, this line. So this index.js is importing app from dot um, slash app, which is basically app.js file. So you don't have to um, spy, um, specify um, the extension. It's going to write, look for web that app.js. And then app.js is simply like, um, obviously any kind of React um, file, it would have to import React and then it is importing some images and then CSS file. And then basically what it is, is, is a function and 
the only basically one and this is one line uh, only one line that this function has is this return statement and it returns html tag so this is we're going to review this but this is jsx syntax where you can actually write down html tag um, inside javascript so here uh, div class name is app and then you can see what's what you see here um, edit source slash app.js so well, what I'm basically going to do is just get rid of everything and then replace with hello react um, save it and now I only have this guy so this is the basic structure of this particular boilerplate project. Index.js is adding app component, and then app component file has one function that is going to return HTML tag uh, inside this parenthesis. Uh, and then this is the line uh, that makes app components available to other javascript files so without this um, the um, web page is going to complain about hey app does not contain a default export so i would have to export it um, again this app is basically handle of this function so you can basically like put this guy right in front of this thing and then it's going to work exactly the same. I'll revert the change. And, okay, so that is the basic project that was created automatically using this um, create React app. Um, so we have uh, one person in the room, just in case. You have a question. I'm going to enable chat so you can type chat message here if you have a question. Okay. So component is the main main um, unit of React. So React component has two types: a functional component um, and class component. And we're going to only look at functional component. Um, Basically, functional components take the form of function. So this is functional component. Um, and then class component has, um, let me give you an example, React So this is um, some example of functional component, but then um, like, you know, both of them are more or less the same. It's just a different syntax. Functional component was introduced in 2018, I think. And then I, as far as I can tell, Facebook is going to move away from the class component and then use functional components. So I'm just going to teach um, functional component only because you, know, you don't have to learn. Um, the code like technology that that is going to obsolete in the future um let me check okay so class versus function react So this is basically the same thing. Um, this is um, function is returning um, HTML tag or JSX syntax. Class always, instead of return function, return statement, class always has a render function. So that's the only difference. But then um, again, Facebook is going to, I think um, they're going to they're not going to get rid of class component, but they're going to move, uh, encourage people to use functional component only because it has more benefit.
uh, which the benefit of which you really don't know unless you use class components. So we're just not going to worry about it. Okay. So, so basically component is to, the main purpose of the component is to render HTML element in module. Um, and it modularize your code per component and it can have other components inside. And there's basically two important things that you have to remember. One is props and states. Props is, props stands for properties. So props is something that is passed to components. States are something that change within the components. So yeah, let's use this example. So again, we're gonna use function component only. Uh, components return JSX syntax, uh, which we're gonna look at uh, in a few minutes. So, and once you create this functional component like this, once you export it, um, you can use this uh, custom HTML tag. And this particular HTML tag is going to call this uh, functional component function and then get HTML from its re return statement and then replace this whole thing. Uh, with the HTML tag that is returned by the function. So let me just create this footer component. Um, so last time um, I was told that like it is nice convention to um, create a components folder, components, and then maintain all the components inside. So I'm gonna say footer. So I have a folder called components and then footer, and I'm going to create index.js. So here I would have to import React uh, from React, which is basically something that we have to do for all kinds of um, React components. I don't know if this matter. Let me just follow the uh, copy and paste. And then I'm just gonna create a function that is going to return HTML tag. So return, um, so JSX syntax, you don't really need um, any kind of quotation. Uh, you can just type HTML tag directly. If you want, um, if you're going to do multi-line HTML tag, it is, uh, kind of a convention to open a parenthesis and then put or write down the HTML tags. So I'm gonna say, hey, H3, H3, and then say I am a footer. And put a semicolon. Uh, of course, I forgot to name the function. And then uh, how would I use it? So this means that now I created a component called footer and then in app.js, I should be able to use it. So I'm gonna say footer, oops, footer. And then um, one thing that you have to remember is that in any kind of uh, elements in JSX code, you have to terminate the tag, which basically means that you have to have an ending tag. Um, so this is the starting tag, but and this is ending tag. For these kind of empty HTML element, you would have to have backslash at the end. So if I save it, save it, and go back to the demo, it's going to complain because um, footer is not defined. Well, footer is defined, but I didn't import it. So I'm going to import footer from this particular file or folder. And then again, index.js is the default um, value for 
the file or the default name so you don't have to type index.js so what i'm going to do is component like i write down the relative path and footer and hopefully now it has a different message it says um footer does not contain a default export again um i did it on purpose like i would have to ex uh, export um, footer so that default so that anybody else any other JS JavaScript file can use this particular function so yeah now we have a footer so basically how so it's again completely different from the way that we write HTML right so so basically we are creating kind of like a HTML components using this function syntax and then once we export it in other javascript file we can use it as if it was html tag and then this html tag will be replaced with whatever html tag was that that is returned by this function so that's the key point. I, I don't know if it makes sense. Uh, hopefully it will, but basically, um, again, this is a component and then you can use as if it was existing HTML tag and React is going to look for this particular um, place to see if there is a function that has the same name and then that function is expected to have a return statement that is going to return um, HTML tags. So I am, if I um, revise this, and then automatically it's going to update the footer content. So I'll make the, so if I revise it, if I save it, it's going to update the HTML tag. So you can imagine, so whenever React wants to, I mean, React wants to render this custom um, tag that was defined by me, it, it's going to call this function and then get this like uh, HTML tag um, from the return statement. And then again, you don't see how these are assembled, like in the how these are being called, because that that is basically what React is doing. You know, like um, remember the the difference between framework library and uh, API framework is basically like you know um, determines the architecture of it, and then it's we are building. Uh, app on top of framework so we don't get to see the all the things that are uh, underlying okay so let's use props um, so you can pass properties um, so any kind of functional component can expect props uh, a parameter um, and then you, of course you can name it in any way you want like object uh, or but typically props is um, semantically you know useful concept and so how do I specify props uh, I can specify props by uh, having attributes in this custom HTML tag so here I'm going to say a is equal to one and B is equal to two of course I would have to um, have uh, double quotation because uh, in React, uh, the only thing that you can um, assign an attribute is like a string value. So now props is going to be an object that is that's going to have property that is exactly the same as the attribute. So I'm going to um, actually write uh, print out props so, so props past is gonna be 
So let's look at the console. So I mean, like even for React, the console is going to work in the, exactly the same way that we were using. So it already passed. Now it has A and B and its value is one and two. So whatever attribute that we specify here is gonna be passed as properties. So like in the example that we have here, let's use this copyright from certain time to certain time. So year one, year two could be a property. So I'm gonna say year one, uh, it's gonna be 1986. I don't know why I picked that number. Year two is gonna be 2020. Uh, and then save it. Now, the props, like, you know, object that I was passed is basically this um, JavaScript object that has two properties. And then it has exactly the, the ad, exact attributes that I specified in the HTML tag. So these two are passed as properties of the parameter of this footer function. Um, obviously I can call it in any way that I want, I think. Yes. Um, and then what can I do with it? Let, let's go back to props just for the sake of being consistent. Um, and then I can use this property value to as part of this rendering HTML text. So um, here comes the, the, the benefit of JSX syntax. So let me go back to the slide and talk about the JSX syntax. So it, it is extension to JavaScript. So it is HTML-like syntax used by React um, that extend ECMAScript uh, 6 so that we can have uh, HTML-like text uh, um, and then interleave those uh, HTML text within JavaScript. So you can, this, again, now this is kind of like a value um, that you can specify. Obviously we are using return statement, but obviously you can assign it to a variable. And now that, because this, is, this can take JavaScript, um, JavaScript code, it has the power of program, um, well, power of expressivity. Um, one caveat is that a lot of the attributes that we know of, like class name, or you know, there's some other thing like tap index, what else? Um, on click, those attributes needs to be uh, used with camel case, like, um, or it may have a different name even, because sometimes it could have a, um, conflict with existing JavaScript keywords. The cool thing about this is that like this curly brace, uh, once we have this curly brace, we can put any kind of um, expression, JavaScript expression that you can evaluate. So anything that you can type in the console, for example, um, yeah, well, something that you can type in console like two plus two, um, two power two to the two, Oh, I guess that's an or function. Uh, or anything, any kind of um, function call could be inside, anything that could be evaluated inside console could be inside this um, um, curly braces. So you can even do this, probably it doesn't make sense though. Um, so let's use that uh, app.js here. I'm going to create a constant variable in my name. And then here I'm going to say I'm going to have to terminate. Um, my name is and then open the curly braces and then put any kind of JavaScript expression. Um, and then 
it's going to work. So this, you know, like in assignment three, I don't know if you, if you remember, you had to do a lot of like a lengthy concatenation, but basically this is, um, this would have been really useful for assignment three, right? So, um, again, those, this sort of thing. Although I didn't put a breakpoint. Or I can call a function. So let's say I'm going to create a function which is going to um, prefix string, string one and string two, which is basically um, return concatenated string, string one plus string two. And then I'm going to call this function. And the first parameter will be, let's say, professor. And second will be name. Um, and then it's going to call this function and then replace this whole expression with whatever that is returned by this function. Um, okay, so, well, that is that. Uh, yeah, so basically this curly brace is going to let you add any kind of JavaScript expression inside this HTML tag which could be useful. And then here, what I'm gonna do is get uh, a uh, current year instead of hard coding 2020, because who knows, we may be able to use this app next year. Um, and then the like, year changes. So what I'm gonna do is open a curly braces and then you date is gonna be, oh, I should not have this double quotation. This is going to create a new object. Um, and then how do I get the year? So let me just test it in the console. So if I do this, I'm going to get, oops, I'm going to get um, current time. So obviously I'm in a different time zone. Um, so if I do this, I'm gonna be able to see all the function, get full year, looks like uh, exactly the function that we want. So it's going to return 2020. So I'm gonna use this guy and then put it here. Okay, so now it's, um, we haven't actually used it, but you see that it got this um, 2020 and then interestingly, it, it was passed as number, which is completely fine or even better for us. So I'm gonna use um, a copyright is, now I can use this coded brace um, syntax and then access this particular property of props. Here one, two props, um, dot year two. Actually, maybe better way to do it is get rid of the property attribute and then just because it's always going to be current year, I hope. Um, so I'm going to cut this guy and then just instead of props year two, I'm going to use that particular. Um, syntax um, expression. So yeah, now I have this nice um, components that is going to work all the time. You know, next year it's gonna be 2021. The year after that it's gonna be 2022. 2022, yes. Um, and I can even go back in time by, um, and I'm changing my clock. So this is my laptop and then my laptop is the server. So I'm going to change time. Um, so what if I change it to 1998 and then save it. And then if I refresh now, 
the server thinks the current date is 1998, so it's going to get, um, it's going to use 1998. All right. How much time do we have? We have 40 minutes. Okay, so any question? Well, we have some real time participants, so I just want to make sure if there's any question. If not, I can move on. Let's revert my clock. Okay, now I just went back to 2020. Um, okay. So, the so next, next thing, so, so hopefully it makes sense, like, you know, um, so one thing you, that you could possibly do is just have this app component have like giant lengthy HTML return type and then do everything in this file, but then that's not really, you know, this doesn't really utilize the benefit of React. The benefit of React is that it is going to render only the HTML components that needs to be updated. So if you, if you have only one component, it's basically the same as a, uh, like rendering the whole page all the time, again and again. So it's not really desirable. You want to decompose your components as much as possible in the same way that I did, like, you know, I have footer, but then I have header. I can imagine that I can have a header. I can have like table and then table has multiple rows and multiple rows could be a component and so forth. So let's uh, go back to the slide. So we have done the live demo, which is basically kind of re repeat of what I did last time. So we're gonna look at state. So let's compare it with props, first of all. Props is something that is passed by the parent component. Um, and then it is kind of like a similar, it's similar to function parameter. And then it was something static that was passed when the function is called. So there's no point of like changing it, right? So prop is something that does not change. What if something changes? There are a lot of different things that changes in HTML file. Like, you know, imagine that we can create a counter that we created for jQuery. Um, like, you know, in assignment three or four, we have the title for task, or there could be new data fetched from the server. And then for those kind of dynamic data, we use state instead. And state is managed within component, and it is kind of similar to variables declared within a function. So hopefully that will make sense if I start using, uh, showing the example. So how do I use state? You have to use hook function. So hooks, hooks are, hook is basically a React function that lets you hook into React state and lifecycle feature. So what does that mean? So what it means is that we can uh, connect a certain JavaScript variable to React state, and then uh, we have to update this variable in a very specific way. And then once this guy is updated, it is going to update the components that has this particular variable automatically. Um, so React like uh, is going to monitor this the the variable of um, state of this particular variable and whenever it has changed it is going to update the components that has it automatically and instead of um, the, like you know update meaning rendering it again um, like the render task function that we had in assignment three or four um, but the cool thing is that it's going to render only the components that it needs to update so if i have um, update in particular state all the other components are stay the same but the, the components that has that particular state is going to be updated. Um, 
state can be used only inside a functional component, and this is how to use state. So, um, first of all, one thing that I forgot to mention is how to import it. Import React, and you want to um, import use state as well from React. So this is the function, use, use state. So let's um, actually look into this uh, more detail. So this is kind of like a weird syntax. So, so re, re, I, I don't know if you have, a, you have ever seen this sort of thing. I have never seen this. Like this is my first time I've seen this syntax, but basically you can you know, ass um, run assignment in batch by putting array. So let's say a comma b is um, like new variable that I'm gonna um, declare. I'm gonna assign with one comma two. Now a is one and b is two. And you know, it is just assigning variables in the format of array. So you can assign uh, this guy to here, this guy to here. Um, you can do like all sorts of different things. So let me say a is a, a comma b comma c is equal to um, this is actually one of the examples that I used in the last lecture. So if I do this, first element is one, second element is hello, the third element is JavaScript object that has key one, value one, key two, value two pairs. So if I do that, A is equal to one, B is equal to hello, C is equal to JavaScript object that has key one and key two property. Okay, so that is given that, uh one thing that i should do is um use constant so use state is going to obviously return array the first element is the value of uh, initial value of this state variable that we want to use and the second element is the function handle of setter of that particular state variable. Uh, and then it takes one parameter, which is gonna be initial value of that state variable. So this line means that um, telling the React that, hey, I'm go now I'm going to use this guy as my state variable. So whenever I update this guy, you would have to render this component again. And then whenever, um, and then React is going to tell me that, hey, whenever you want to update this variable, you have to use this setter function. Um, and then this is the default, like initial value. So let's look at this guy. So let's say we want to declare, I mean, the name of the variable could be anything and name of the function could be anything. So it basically says that, hey, I'm going to say, I want to have a state variable called count. And then I'm gonna uh, call the setter function set count, and use state is going to return those two values, and it's gonna take the initial value as um, a zero as an initial value. And then once I have this, I can update this count value with the setter function. So setter function is going to take one parameter, which is basically whatever. Um, value that you want to set uh, to a count variable. Um, and the cool thing is that because this is a state variable, whenever you call this sort of thing, it's going to trigger render function, which is basically the whole component function, because whole component function is going to return uh, JSX syntax. This uh, is not going to work because this is constant variable, and then by default, I mean, everything in React, it's, um, it's better to declare as a constant variable because 
it is something that runs uh, unless unless you re, unless you want a variable that changes as part of the algorithm within the functional component. Um, everything else needs to be constant variable. So you cannot even run it. Like even if you can run this, um, it's not going to trigger render function. So let's try this. I um, mean, the other thing that I we would have to know is handling events. So like, you know, actually let's try that. Let's try, how do I try that? Um, so in footer, uh, um, let's create a new component called timer. So basically what we're gonna do is like build a timer that we made um, in, um, like, you know, I don't remember the lecture recording that we had uh, for jQuery and JavaScript. But we're gonna do the same thing in React. So I'm gonna create a component called timer. So I would have to create a new folder. I mean, you don't have to, you can put anywhere you want. Like I can, um, we create, um, declare it in the same folder, but it's just like a better uh, convention to uh, like, uh, I was told that like this is better convention to create components and then create a, each folder for each component that you create. But just for the sake of um, demonstration, let's create a timer here. So I'm going to import timer from timer.js, again, I don't have to put JS. Um, and then in timer, I would have to import React. And then this time I would have to uh, import use state function because that's the function that we would have to use to um, declare the state variable from React. And then functional component is basically uh, JavaScript function that is going to uh, return HTML tag. And then let's say a timer. And then I would have to export it, export default timer so that app.js can use this timer. So again, now that I have created this functional component, app.js can now uh, create this custom HTML tag. And then whenever React is find this new custom HTML tag, it's going to look up this uh, timer component and then run this particular function and get HTML tag from the return statement and then replace um, this guy with whatever um, HTML tag was returned by the return state. All right, so let's look at the thing. Now I have a, I, I'm a timer. Um, let's check if recording is done. Still not done. Okay, so I'm a timer. I don't know why I put like semicolon there. Okay, so what do I do from here? What I'm gonna do is create a, a state variable. So again, const, and then let's name it count. Um, uh, now I have to declare the name of the setter. So I'm gonna set, um, set count, but it could be anything like, I don't know, count setter. And then call use state and default value of the count variable. So let's start with zero. And then now I can use this um, variable inside this um, JSF syntax using curly brace. Um, oops, count. And now it's gonna have one. Let's make it bigger. 
Okay. And then like uh, last time, let's create a button that will reset and recommit. Um, so let's say reset. Increment. Um, one thing that you have to be careful is that React component can only have one root element. So right now, the top level element is H1, and then it has another two elements. So uh, like if I save it, it's going to complain. Um, must be wrapped in a in closing tag. Um, oh. Uh, so basically, it's because we don't we have multiple elements. So I'm going to create a top level elements, and then always have um, this one element that is returned by this return statement. Now it's not going to complain. Okay, now we have a two button that does not do anything. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to increase this state variable whenever I click this increment button. So how do I do that? Um, so you, uh, the only way to handling event is to use inline attributes. Well, I mean, obviously you can use jQuery within React, but that's, there's no point of using jQuery you know, um, or using JavaScript add, add event to listener. Um, so I don't know if you know inline JavaScript, inline event handler, and um, one click. This is basically um, main way for React to um, handle events. The only difference is that again, it's going to use camel case, camel case um, attribute. So instead of on click, instead of uh, so C will be um, capital letter, and you can it has multiple different attributes such as on click, on change, and you can see the whole list in this web page. So let's say. Um, keyboard event, it has on key down, on key press, on key up, and mouse event it has on click, you know, on context menu, which is right click, double click, and so forth. So um, the cool thing about React is that now you don't really need to specify ID or class. I mean, I, you don't really need to specify ID class for the sake of event handling uh, and the jQuery does not have to, I mean jQuery selector syntax and uh, event handler syntax is kind of like, you know, computationally heavy because you have to select one particular element, which is basically search algorithm, right? And then imagine that you have like an infinite number of um, elements in an HTML page, it's going to get slower, right? So here I'm going to say on click and inside this attribute, you can either specify function um, or you can provide the handle of the event handler or, or specify function without calling it. So what do I mean by that? So there's two different ways to do it. Like, you know, basically I can do something like um, of course, I have to open this curly brace because it's JavaScript expression. And then I'm going to say, hey, I'm going to call, uh, specify this function. And then I'm going to say alert. Um, and the reset is clicked. Obviously, it's hard to parse, but basically it's going to work. Um, if I click it, now it's running this um, alert line. Um, but instead, better way to do it is probably give it a uh, function handle. So I'm going to um, actually declare a function called reset. Again, you know, there's nothing, you know, 
like you might be confused because I have function inside function, but basically this is exactly the same as creating a variable, reset, um, thing like this, right? So here I'm gonna say reset. Now it's doing exactly the same thing. Uh, the only difference is that uh, before I um, declared the whole function inside this inline attribute like this, um, I don't even know if it's gonna work or not. Let's try. It is working, that's cool. But instead I provided this handle to this function which I declare uh, before this return statement. All right, so that's not what I want though, right? Like the, that's alerting is not what I want. What I want is updating the state value. So let's start the increment first. Increment and then let's use this. Um, and then add another inline attribute for increment button and then give it the handle to the function. Now increment is gonna work. We said it's gonna work, but it's not updating the, uh, updating the uh, state variable. So here, what I'm gonna do is use the setter. So again, second element of use state, I mean, to be precise, the second element of the array that is returned by use state is the handle to the setter function. So I'm gonna call this guy and then I'm gonna increment, uh, oh, I would have to, so reset is gonna be setting this to zero, right? Which is easy, but then here it's gonna be, um, you would have to think, um, look, uh, look up the previous state, right? So I'm gonna say count plus one is gonna be new value of this count variable. So if I do that, magically, oops, that's magically, it is going to update this element. Why? The reason why is that we're using hook function and we're using state variable. So state hook um, is the main reason why React care about these updates. State variable is used as part of this HTML render. And then, uh, because we are updating this um, state variable using this setter, now the setter as part of setter is going to tell React, hey, one of the state variables is updated, you better update this whole component that has this particular state variable. So let's um, basically, render function is this whole function, this whole function is render function, right? So I'm gonna put, um, I'm gonna check, uh, show you the, the order. So let's say console.log is one. And then let me put a uh, console.log message inside increment, which is the second one. And then call three. And then let's see how it appears. So if I increment, how does it work? So it's gonna be two, one, three, one, three. So two is the very first thing that runs because why? Because I clicked increment button. So if I click the increment button, it's going to run this event handler. So this is um, the message that it runs. Now the React knows that, hey, this count variable, state variable is updated. So I would have to render this component again, which is basically calling this function, uh, this whole function. So somewhere you know, in React um, under the hood, 
it is going to call this timer function. So it's going to type, it's going to, you know, print out this message one, and then this is just this function declaration. So it's not going to run this line. And then it's going to run three. Uh, and then it runs actually one more time. The reason why, I mean, you don't have to worry about like why it appears twice. Basically it's like a, um, the default React behavior where it's, where it's going to render um, initial value and then updated value. So yeah, I don't know if that makes sense, but basically this is the, this is kind of like a beauty of the React. I updated the story variable and I didn't have to call render function. React is going to notice that, hey, state variable is updated. So let me actually call this um, render function again, which is this uh, timer function. Okay, so this is the key thing. This is a very important concept. Um, we have some real-time participant. I wonder if there's any questions. I'm looking at the chat or like. Okay, no question, I feel like. Can you guys give me a thumbs up? No, yes. Okay. Maybe not listening. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> um, this was, for, oh, okay, thank you. Yeah, there's some um, thumbs up, thumbs down, and then um, applause and so forth. Great, so we have like 15 minutes left, I think. So one thing that I wanted to do is like um, kind of creating the history. Like, you know, I don't know, I don't know if you remember this uh, interaction history that we created um, in jQuery example. So I'm gonna do the same thing. So what do I do? Like basically I should be able to uh, create history here, but I'm going to create a components because that is modular enough to create a new component. So let's say uh, timer history, uh, and then you have to terminate. And then again, I would have to import it to be able to use it um, from where. Um, I would have to create a new component. So let me actually create a components under the component folder. Now it has a weird structure because I'm mixing it up. So I have timer history, I'm gonna create an index.js, um, which is, you know, a file that I'm going to use to create in timer history. So here I'm gonna say components, find the timer history function from components and timer history. Uh, and then here I would have to declare it. So import react uh, from react and then function timer history and it's going to return um, very simple HTML tag. I, oops, what is this? I am, a, I am timer history. And then export it. Then what do I have? Um, module not found. Uh, Primary history, components. Did I not say, did I not save something? Let me refresh. Okay. Interesting. 
Uh, I do not know why it does not import timer history from this guy. Components, timer history. Oh, he's Troy. Oh, typo. Okay, now I have this new uh, components for interaction history. So what I'm gonna do is um, give it a history of history of button clicks. So again, what I want is to create a state variable because whenever new button clicks add, added to a list or array, I want to update this particular components, right? So to be able to do that, I will using this uh, use state. So here I'm gonna say history or, or yeah, history is fine. And then maybe set history. And then initially it's gonna be empty array. But basically, you know, his state could be anything. State could be, um, state could be array, state could be object. Um, so, and then pass this guy as properties. So history is gonna be history. Um, let me just name it differently just to make it, you know, Less confusing interaction history and then interaction history. Okay, so it's not going to complain about anything, but here um, in timer history, I'm going to I'm just going to print out what is passed. So props console log um, props and history. Uh, so where is this coming from? This is coming from the attribute name of timer history, right? So if I um, just for the sake of less confusion, I'm going to get rid of this guy, props past. Let's go to footer. I get rid of this. And then now the only thing that prints out is the history that was passed from the timer. Okay, so what I'm gonna well what I'm gonna do is actually add something to the array whenever button is clicked. Um, so let's go here. So whenever button is clicked, like this is you know button click event handler. So I'm gonna call this set uh, setter of this interaction history. And then what do I have to do here? I mean, I would have to provide the entire array that is going to, um, so like, you know, this is not appending or um, merging. So it, I would have to provide the whole uh, array here. So how do I do that? So let's say what I wanted to do is something like, um, if I have existing array, I want to um, add so, um, something at the end. There's a function called concatenate. Uh, and then if I put uh, well, the parameter, is going to be added. Uh, and then like this, the return value of this whole expression is gonna be new array. It is not going to update this original array. So um, I don't know if you remember this, uh, let's, uh, so let's say test is one, two, three. So there's two different ways to do it. Like if you do this, it's going to modify the original array, but then if you do this concat function, it's going to return new array, but it does not update the original array. So that's what we're gonna use. So let's try this. So what do I want? What I want is I want the original um, array and then add one more thing. What should I add here? 
I'm gonna add an object that has two property. The first property is new date, or which is basically the timestamp of the button click. And the second thing is type is gonna be increment. Okay, I think that's it. So I'm gonna do the same thing for reset. Except, the, uh, except I'm gonna set type to reset. So it has some error, unexpected token. Uh, oh, so concat is taking one parameter um, and then this is gonna be new array. Um, so it's kind of hard to parse this. So here, I didn't close the setter function. So this is the setter function, and it take this is the parameter that it takes, which is going to be new array um, that is returned by concat function. Concat function is going to sorry about the noise. Um, like in the existing original array, is going to add um, one more element at the end and then again this is not going to modify the original array but it's going to return new array so once i have this uh and then i would have i would have the same error for this so i'm going to use this guy now whenever i click it timer history is going to pass this new array that has date and type. So I can keep pressing it. So you can see that I have eight button click and each one of them has timestamp and then type. Of course I can click reset So now it's passing the entire array. So what do I do with this? In timer history, I'm almost there. I'm going to use um, a function, JavaScript array function called map. Um, so map is basically, so if I have array, uh, map is like a member function of array and then it can take one um, parameter which is function and then what it's going to do is it takes uh, uh, each element as item and then whatever return value that this uh, event handler has um, with that it's going to create a new array so you see i created a function that basically returns something um, that is twice the parameter, like twice the parameter, and it has created a new value with this um, new array. So basically it's mapping one array to a new different array. So if I press three, I mean, if I put three, it's gonna be different array. If I put items plus hello, it's going to be something like this. I don't know why this is useful. So I'm going to have to go over time slightly. Please bear in mind. So again, map is an array, a JavaScript array function that is going to map um, array to new array with this mapping function. So I'm going to actually use that. So what I'm gonna do is create uh, messages, which is going to be props.history.map, and then I would have to um, specify, the map, specify the mapping function. So here, I would have to take the element or item. This is each element of the array. 
So what I'm going to return is basically JSX um, value. Um, div, um, and then I'm gonna say item.type. And then let's print this guy, print out this message. Uh, I don't know if it's gonna be synchronous, but let's check it out. Saved it, I click it. So it has React element. So this is like the, the phys uh, physical reality of this like uh, JSX syntax, but it is creating div element with um, item type props. So, oh, actually, again, I was wrong. I would have to use this curly braces to be able to use this JavaScript expression. Let me try that again. If I look into this, if I will have a div element that has increment, which is basically um, one of the property of this history elements. So what I'm gonna do here is, I'm just gonna print this. So one of the cool thing about React is that if it has array and then it has like JSX component, like JSX index, it's just keep going to Add, like it's going to unpack everything and then add um, add, it, add them as a JSS syntax. So let's save it and see what it does. Now we have a interaction history. Um, of course you can do um, timestamp uh, so because we have uh, item date, and then this is date object, this is not string, so we would have to convert this string to um, this date object to string. So I don't have a good um, memory to do this. Date object to string, JavaScript, to string method, okay, so I'm gonna call to string and then let's see what it does. Uh, okay, so it is giving us timestamp, although it would have been better if it was sh shorter. So I don't know if it could does have a different kinds of formatting. Um, I don't want to spend too much time on this, by the way. Maybe what I want to do is substring. So uh, maybe I want to get from here from zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. 10, uh, Let's say 20 or 20 or something. So let's do substring zero to 12, 20. Okay, maybe more, 26, maybe 24. And then now I have a interaction history that has date and time. So you can see this is increasing. So if I try to click every second, I created this timer, uh, which is equivalent to what we did um, in jQuery example. So yeah, so that's, I think that's it for today. I am going to post this uh, source folder in Canvas so you can try. Uh, and I would 
strongly recommend you to try because the last assignment is going to be about React. Um, logistics assignment three is the score, um, the grade, like assignment three will be graded in a few days. I think it's almost done. Like GTAs told me that they will finish very soon. So we're going to uh, return the grades, uh, return assignment three um, within a few days. And then I'm going to release assignment five within a few days and like no matter when I release it, you're going to have at least two weeks to work on it. So yeah, I think that's it for today. And then hopefully this time the recording works, you know, I'm going to be frustrated if it doesn't work. I saw that I have to do it again, you know, <laughs> but at least I have a few witness, but you know, any uh, final question? before we break. If not, maybe could you do thumbs up? Two thumbs up. Okay. Is there a YouTube link for today's class? Yes, once I down, I mean, once I get the file, based on the assumption that it worked, I'm going to put it under YouTube and then leave the YouTube link in the canvas in the same way that I used to do. Any other question? Okay, well, thank you very much, guys. If you have any questions, just feel free to send me an email or post in the Piazza. Otherwise, I'll see you on Thursday. Thank you. Bye-bye.